Well, a very good morning to you again. And uh, we've been joined by Socrates Safo. Socrates Safo is a uh, movie producer. Uh, now, you're welcome to our studios. Uh, you're also a member of an association. Which association is that? Uh, I'm also a member of uh, ASOC, that is the uh, Audiovisual Rights Society of Ghana that uh, protects uh, the rights of uh, audiovisual content providers. Okay. What about is it FIPAC? Or FIPAC, FIPAC, Film Producers Association. Are you also a member? Yeah, I'm a member or of you Film Producers. I'm a member of Film Producers yes, Society, yes, uh, the former PRO. <laughs> okay. And uh, also a member of the Anti Piracy Committee of mm -hmm. Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now we'll be talking about um, the concerns you have with the way they show movies um, that are produced in Ghana. In, in the buses, especially mm -hmm. for the long journey buses. Yeah. But uh, uh, tell me about the industry. W w how's the industry doing so far? Well, I would say that um, it's evolving. We started from a point. We've got into a point we're facing challenges now. And uh, we're looking at how to survive, I would say. Hmm. Yeah. You don't think over the last five years? Because I, I've known you've been in the business for some decades now. 25 years now. Yes. And uh, you've not seen any improvement, especially in the last decade? Well, you see, when you say improvement, improvement in certain aspects, and uh, we're facing challenges in our, our okay. other areas. So yeah. specifically, where are we improving and where are we, we, we We're improving in terms of uh, structures. Uh, when we started, I remember my first film, I just invited a few friends around the area who are just interested in, in becoming stars. Um, there was nothing like negotiation for pay or costume or even feeding. I remember it, this, it was the artists themselves who even provided food on the set. Um, now we negotiate with artists, we sign contracts, we even pay into their uh, bank accounts. I know most of the stars, their accounts numbers and which banks they save. So some of these things are, now you go on set and you have to provide a, a welfare, um, lodging, transportation, and that all used that. to be provided back in the nineties, didn't it? No, it, it, I know it, catering it, and lodging were always part of the budget. Uh, um, not as it, it is today. Now it's more structured. It's more structured. Okay, so now. let's take an average movie star like, um, okay, John Dumelo or Majid. Don't go there. I won't tell you. No, no. Okay, let's say, take an average movie star like me. Mm -hmm. Now within the structures you have. Yeah. Um, what do I come along with if you want to hire me to, to be in, 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 in your movie? What structure do I come with a manager, a well-structured um, financial system for which you can deposit? Uh, how do you ne need to make sure my accommodation is served? Because some of them out there in Hollywood and in the UK, in Asia, they are, or in Bollywood, they have publicists, they have this, they have the wardrobe attendant, they have a special makeup artist than death. The makeup artist for the rest of the film crew, etc. I just want you to tell me. What well, it, it depends. Um, in Ghana, I'll say it depends on the individual. Some artists have managers. Uh, some also don't have. They do their own negotiations and things like that. Some are very. Um, should I say meticulous when it comes to certain things? Some are also relaxed. It depends on the rapport between you and the artist. There, there is an artist or there are some artists that I can just pick a phone and will not need to even call them. I will just flash them and they will call back. And uh, I invite them, come over, we sit down, we talk, I give, hand them a script. And there are some artists too who will also um, direct you to their manager. So it depends on the individual. Which one do you like better as producers? Personally, um, I would prefer the more relaxed um, ones because if we are to go strictly by uh, the black and white that is spent on paper, I think we, producers would jail a lot of artists because uh, sometimes uh, we always hear of producers treating artists bad, but we don't hear of the artists how they treat producers bad. Sometimes they become hot cakes and uh, there are a lot of producers on them. They come on your set and if in my standard contracts, I have um, reporting time for every artist and the closing time, breaking time. But an artist may come late and will just give you an excuse, I'm sorry. So you also just ignore. Okay. So if we are to go by that, sometimes they take more than they can. Maybe they give you that, oh, I'm starting your production on uh, Tuesday for you. 
because he knows he's ending another production on Monday, something may happen. It may be an act of God or something, and that production may delay. Then he will call you and say that, oh, Charlie, due to one or two things, I can't come today, so can we make it on uh, Wednesday? There's been an instance where I have been made to wait for about a week. That's just for, uh, he's a, your lead cast? Yeah. Okay. You understand? I've been made to wait for about a week. I didn't say anything. The, the world didn't hear of it. Okay. But let a producer do, do something. that something to a, uh, right. an artist. In Ghana, when you say producers, are they the same people they call executive producers in other regions? Yes. We we, 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 we referring to executive producers, quote-unquote, because uh, that is the main thing. Uh, fortunately for us, our industry, I would say that we're doing a lot of magic here because there are things that outside world they will not be able to do or without it they cannot perform but over here we do it we we get or oh, personally i get friends from outside world who come here who are producers and they look at the way we're doing it and they say look if we are able to do something like this in our uh, system i think we will be able to work well example let's say a place like uh, burkina faso just here sometimes i hear people referring to burkina faso oh if you go to burkina faso all oh, Burkina Faso have got is a festival, first Paco. They don't and produce films? How many films do they produce? Maybe they'll produce year? with some French collaborators once and in a while. And even that one, you see, we, people don't understand how it works. You see, it's a French colony. And the French government may have uh, filmmakers who have finished school, some who are redundant, and they have a welfare system. So they must give their, their people jobs. And what can they do? Okay. Get a producer from um, Africa, get a script, send your people down there, give them money, give it to your, produ uh, your people back. Because they bring their cameramen, their whatever, down from Paris or France, and they will come and work on your production. And they pay the money back to their people. At the end of the day, what do your indigenous get? The concern that many critics of your industry talk about is that there's no growth in the industry, artistically. Not uh, the actors, but in terms of what well, the final product of what you go and produce comes out of? Well, um, I would say democracy, the, that's the beauty of democracy. Meaning where everybody can talk where they want? Yes. It depends I, I'm on asking how. for your assessments. Personally, I see a lot of growth, huge one. In the quality of the production? Yes. People are not watching, they are only talking. They don't even know what is going on. Meet these people and ask them, so last three months, how many films were released? They don't know. Did you watch any new movie last three months? They will say, oh, no, me, I don't watch Ghanaian films. But he's telling you that, oh, the quality is bad. But the same person is not watching. Are you, are, are you saying the critics don't watch, or you no, say the majority no. of Ghanaians don't watch? The critics don't watch. We have a huge following. People who are enjoying it, they come for it every day. That is why we produce it. Between uh, November 9th to December 31st of uh, 2013, 113 films were released. You mean just within that space? Yes. Less than two months? Yes. In Ghana? In Ghana. Okay. People don't know this. You see, uh, unfortunately, I think the industry, one area that um, is we, we're lacking in this industry is the research and development area. Research and development? Yes. Meaning we what? Don't, we don't have a, uh, an institution that is doing research and giving information out. How? What do you mean? Is it into the content of the films? Into or the industry itself. Or into pro uh, production activities and yes, everything. And everything. You understand? Okay. We don't have. So all this information is out there, but the public don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't. We do, we also not doing film study in Ghana. We're well, not doing film study. We have NAFTI and no, NAFTI is, study. No, NAFTI is doing filmmaking. It's oh, not doing okay. film study. There's difference between film study and filmmaking. So people have no information about the industry. All they know is that, oh, it's a jackal, a little win, and they just... But if you do film study, you take your time and you study the industry. Okay. Now, talking about the jackal, a little win, et cetera, talk uh, brings to mind the issue of local movies versus... Uh, or so to speak, all of them are local movies. So to speak, the ones that are, 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 are produced in vernacular mm -hmm. and the ones that are produced in formal English. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the assessment is for the audience out there in terms of where the production level should be and where the demand is? Is it do you produce because 
a lot of people want English movies or want the vernacular or dialect type cast of movies? Um, I think uh, checking from the statistics, uh, we sell more with the local um, dialects. Than really? The, yeah. And you see, this is where film study also comes in. That is studying the pattern? Yes. You see, it's not a new thing that is coming out that these days people watch uh, the English, uh, the tree than the English. No. It has always been? It has always been. You Why see? do we have that? Um, it's everywhere. It's not just in Ghana. It's everywhere. You go to India. They produce their films in their local. Not no. that they don't do films in well, their... We, they have Hindu, they have Teglu, they have Punjab, yes. they have... They, they, they but have they, the other. English is their official language. Yeah, why, of course. Why don't they produce films in English? They but are English Indian films. But they speak a lot more Hindi, so... Yes. Why? Because that is how it is. Now, let's, let, let me take you back. If I say it didn't start yesterday, because people don't do uh, film study, they don't know this. Um, I told you so was produced years ago. Mm? But don't forget that before I told you so, and around that time, there were films like Teresa, The Boy Kuma Sidno, and all the rest. They were in English. But nobody remembered those films. They only talk about I told you so. Because they were in local language. Because it's in and the there was a lot of satire and yes. some comedy. Yes. But how many films were produced around that time? So calculate by the ratio. You see that I told you so have a huge following because of the language. Now you come down and you have a film like uh, Sika Sun Sun, which was all produced in there. But around that, I produced a film like um, uh, Step Dad and all those films. But uh, Sika Sun Sun made a huge uh, impact because of the language. There was Kanana, you see, there was Kanana and the rest. And all these films, all these films made an impact, but it was very small. Then we started doing the study, and we realized that, no, the local language is, uh, have a huge following. It goes deep, deep into the hinterlands, where the English films don't even go. So this is the part, and if you do film study, you will know all this. Unfortunately, I tell you that there are more foreigners who know much about our industry than Guyanians. No, those who, they do f film study. You are saying we yeah, don't do it. So if they know, here. I think it's logical. Yeah, they okay, come we'll down. ask you later um, what steps you are doing to make sure we have academia interested in film history or film study. Because once we have filmmaking uh, schools in Ghana, then we should have the, the, the academia also interested in film studies mm -hmm. uh, or in film history or whatever it is that you're mm -hmm. talking about. Now, uh, let me ask you a certain pattern. Since we have a lot more people interested in local movies, that brings us to the question of patronage mm -hmm. in terms of which levels of society patronize it. Do we even have uh, the formal or the, so to speak, very literate sectors of our, our population? You see, let me be a bit... Um, one film that sells a lot because I've been in the distribution, production, exhibition. Yeah. Uh, I started as a film uh, video theater operator and all that, so I know. One film that sells a lot that we don't advertise is pornography. People watch a lot of pornography in Ghana and even the whole world. But what happens? Nobody talks about it. People condemn it. Mm? These films you talk about, three films, it cut across. Everybody watch it. They mm -hmm. all watch it. Sometimes they come out and they want to be seen to be elites. And, uh, so, oh, me, I don't watch. They watch. They watch so yeah. when you talk of... It's true. I know, I know people who work in the bank, etc. watch. It's but that brings us to a subject matter for the morning. Um, I have traveled a couple of times in those, um, the, the Kia bed buses mm -hmm. that go to Kumasi and elsewhere. Yeah. And I, I've watched a couple of the films on, t uh, on live screen in, mm -hmm. the, in, in, in the buses. Mm -hmm. Now, you seem to have a trouble... Um, with those films that are watching the buses. Mm -hmm. You don't have uh, trouble with that very audience watching the film at home, but you have a problem with it if they watch it. It depends on the, 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 the contract that I have with uh, that very audience. Uh, contract in the sense that uh, when I produce the film and I put it on CD and I'm selling it, what is the contract between me and the buyer? You are talking about copyright issues. 
I'm talking oh. about contracts. Okay, and then that also does this into copyright issues. Well, right? if copyright falls under that contract, then we're talking about Well, so uh, we'll be looking at that next. And uh, it's still uh, this part of the whole show, AM Talk, where we're now going to look at um, the issue of why the movies are watching cars, and then we have the film producers having concerns, not only about copyright issues, but what contract they have and why people should be watching films in cars or in vehicles when they're traveling in long journeys. They feel that they should be getting a lot more in terms of remittances or money than they're getting. We'll also be joined by a copyright lawyer as well, or uh, a lawyer for the uh, for the entertainment industry, uh, he does all sorts of things, though, not only restricted to entertainment. Uh, Michael Quay Jr. will be with us. He'll be joining Sukriti Safo next. We're, we're taking a short break. When we come back, we will talk to uh, Michael Quay Jr. as well. So we have in the studio, joining us for the discussion, um, well, he's a lawyer for all trades. It doesn't matter which uh, litigation he should be involved in. But now he's an entertainment lawyer for the discussion for today, represented a number of clients within the music industry um, on a number of cases or some litigation issues. Michael Craig Jr. is my guest also, joining Socrates Safo. Now, Socrates um, has been talking about... Um, Excuse me. My name is Socrates, not Socrates. Oh, okay. Socrates Safo. Yeah, Socrates. Okay. okay. I guess with the famous Socrates footballer, Socrates. you always have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, now, he has been raising some concerns about films that are watched in cars, um, the traveling buses, especially for the <coughs> long distance journeys, you know, to Kumasi elsewhere. And those films tend to entertain the passengers uh, and keep them glued. Uh, serves also as some form of advertising for uh, those very line of, uh, of transport owners as well. Um, if the films are made for those very audiences at home to watch, why should they have difficulties as film producers if the same audri audiences are traveling and watch them in buses? Um, let me start by saying a very good day to your uh, very cherished viewers. Uh, my fellow panelist, Socrates Safo, and uh, your very good self, uh, Roland. Um, I would want to ask a first question. Who made that pronouncement? Which body? I want to know which body made that pronouncement. Um, it is the Film Producers Association of Ghana. Okay. Yeah. They made that uh, yeah. pronouncement. Okay. So in Ghana, for example, do we have um, a film bank like for example in the UK they have a film bank where all the movie producers register their movie mm -hmm. they pay a small fee for that mm -hmm. and in effect anybody who wants to show the movies in a bus in an aeroplane you go to this film bank institution either online or on the phone and then you can um, ask for permission so usually for about 10 cities 20 cities whatever You'll be allowed maybe a 10-day period to show it, and then you either have to renew or you show another movie. Do we have something like that no, here? No, it's part of the plans that we're putting up now. Okay. So I want to start from the point of view that it is a very good thing, and it is an international policy that this should be done. But it's not realistic in Ghana. Why? Because we have not put in the, the procedures and the structures in place to be able to um, enforce 
this law. Ghana is a country where we're very good at um, enacting laws, but we are not very good at enforcement. And this is why I'm excited to see uh, a renowned person like Socrates here, because I know he's a kind of dynamic person who can push that these structures should be there to enable the whole procedure to work. Because, as I said, you cannot tell a bus driver that he cannot show movies. And yet, if he wants to show movies, what should he do? First of all, there's something called copyright. <coughs> copyright means that there's an original author of a work or a product. And in most cases, we're looking at music, we're looking at poetry, we're looking at playwright. Then we can also look at movies. So first of all, the copyright must and, be registered. And, and softwares. Yeah, I mean, for example. Works. Yeah, but we, yeah, it's, it's, yes. yeah, we can look at all sorts. I mean, uh, uh, we can go even further to look at intellectual property, all various things that can be uh, uh, copyrighted or registered. Some even will go as far as registered trademarks and all mm -hmm. the rest of it. Patents and etc. Now, that's where I come in as a lawyer. And it even starts from the industry itself. The industry has a problem. Instead of going to a media and entertainment lawyer, somebody who specializes in that field, they go to just any lawyer who treats it as contract law. And because he doesn't understand the intricacies of that industry, you get, instead of a specific contract, you go and get a generalistic contract. And so the contract is like a hat fit for all sizes. It will never really fit mm. your head. Mm. So when you have this copyright, you register it. Now, once you register it, you, the person who got this copyright, for example, you own it. And by law, you know, we have our Act 690, mm -hmm. as lawyers would call it, but the Copyright Act of 2005, mm -hmm. yes, if you look at the thing, text section 5, it tells you that anybody who copyrights a law has an economic right to benefit from it. Because, you see, if we don't do that, why would Socrates bother to produce a film? He has to make money. Secondly, he may not even finance the movie. There's what we call an executive producer. The executive producer is like the financial producer. Well, in Ghana, involved. the producers also double as the executive producers. That is, mean. if he uses his own money. So it, he could double in some cases. And in some cases, he doesn't use his money, but he still calls himself executive producer. I mean, these are all lines that are being crisscrossed here and there. But the industry is and will grow, hopefully, even with the advent and the discussion of this kind of very important topic. So once this thing um, happens with regard to the registration and the economic rights, one, as I said, the producer must get something. The executive producer must get something. How will they make money? They must show it. How will they be able to minimize it being shown just like that? Then that is where it comes that there must be a permission granted by the film industry for you to watch it. But the permission is not blanket because I may give you permission to watch my film in your bedroom because when you buy the DVD, you are licensed only to watch it privately and not for economic gain. Is that so? Yes. But if, if, it's, if it's all written there. A lot of people don't, don't, don't no, no, read I've, it. I've read those ones. I, 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 re, I read them all the time. But, then, but uh, the point is that when it's been shown in the bars, what, what makes it an economic gain? Yes, that's what I'm about to get to. So now, when you are supposed to watch it privately, then you have the license for that. Then we have something called public performance screening mm. license. Mm. Or you have the um, commercial screening license. These are all things that Mr. Socrates, either they have it, if they don't have it, they have to put Ad it together. Advocate. That license allows you, for example, to maybe if you are watching in a bar, if you are watching in a club, like a golf club, which is a public place, but at the same time you are using it to entice clientele for your business. That one too has a separate license that you must have. Then of course we have the public viewing screening license. Those are the ones that are used for cinema. For cinema. Okay. And that one will be given to you, let's say, over a longer period of time and so on and so forth. Now, these are all things 
that the music industry, the film industry, must start putting in place. And it, it is good news to hear the attempts being made. But then me, my question is, before they made this law, who did they consult? Before they made this law, what steps did they take in place? Well, they didn't make the law, did they? No, they, 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 they made a, a, given a certain directive that this should not happen anymore. Mm. Okay. So what we do, first of all, is you call some round table. Mm. Film producer is not the only entity in there. You must even have lawyers and even accountants and IT people to show you some of the best ways to get your money. Because it's all about revenue collection. So you sit down and plan, how are we going to make this policy? Then when we make the policy, how are we going to administer it? You need to set up your team. Then once this is done, you now look at the laws that have to be enacted. Because for the thing to work, it must be a law. It can't just be a directive. What is the best way of incorporating or passing this law? And then for the law to be passed, there must be certain structures put in place that if, for example, you go and do this, in, in America, mm. you can get as high as 250000 fine, or you can get a term of imprisonment, or yeah. both. They can't tell me in Ghana, for example, if you flout that law, what you get. My brother, is there any yes, a, a, a we, punishment? We, yes, everything is there, okay, black which and is, white. Yes. Wait, yeah. which, what, what is the punishment? Well, I think you pay about a 200 penalty units or something like that. And, so. and where, where is that? And shine. They want law. It is in the copyright law. It's in the copyright law of Ghana. Yeah. That if you no, you, you we've sent people to court and they've been <laughs> they penalized been. and uh, all that. Okay. Now, really? Now, yeah. Now, well, then in that case, what <laughs> should happen is we need public education. Yeah. With regard to what is happening, because if people are not educated mm. to understand mm. some of these things, mm. then it's not going to work. In the least. Okay. Now, 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 now Mr. Sokoti, since you have noticed uh, some of these lapses, um, where are you starting all these? Is it only in the media or you're engaging the necessary stakeholders? And I believe that Michael Kwe uh, Jr. Would, would agree with me. We yeah. need um, the intervention of the state structures for you to have all these uh, put into law, the proper structures also laid, and once they're legalized, then enforcement can take place. Well, first of all, let me uh, thank uh, uh, Mr. Michael Kui for um, the interventions. interventions and mm. uh, I will say that uh, it's well taken. But let me assure you that all your concerns have been taken care of already. Uh, we have all the structures in place. Uh, we've had several roundtable meetings. And uh, coming back to you, I will say that. Uh, Wait, just let let me also add this roundtable meetings. Who are some of the stakeholders invited to those meetings? Um, we've had meetings with the GPRTU before even coming out with this thing. For two years, we've been holding meetings with them. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come uh, to that aspect of the meetings and and, and mm. whether perhaps you are not jumping um, the gun, yeah, you are not okay. putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, okay. But uh, how are you making sure that you are lobbying the necessary um, stakeholders? within the state apparatus? We've done that already. Okay, and uh, what has been some of the responses so far? It's the usual, you know, they are always engaged in something else. So it got into a point where we feel that we must now fight for ourselves. Because at the end of the day, I'm the loser. You understand? Mm -hmm. And now I have to, um, if nobody is listening to me, then I have to uh, defend myself now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they, they don't have capacity to do enforcement, do they? Michael? No, and that's why I'm saying that for such a meeting, I would have recommended mm -hmm. that you involve legal, legal counsel. People. We did. Accountants. We did. Police. We did. So who from the legal fraternity was part we, of the we, roundtable discussion? Well, we have uh, lawyers that I don't know if I have to advertise them here. Oh, it's not about adver ad advertising. Yeah, but, uh, them, but the copyright uh, office is being headed by... Uh, it's under the uh, Attorney General's uh, department. And there yeah. were lawyers from Attorney General's department? Yes. There as part of the state? Yes. Okay, I find it, I mean, totally unheard of. Because for me, uh, this is an industry that I do a lot of work in. Mm -hmm. But for me, the first thing, and I'm happy that he told us the answer when I asked him, is that do we have a film bank mm -hmm. where we've registered all the movies? For example, anybody who produces a movie, in order for you to get your license, mm -hmm. you must have registered it. 
so that it's listed. Yeah. Then if anybody wants to watch it yeah. after they bought it for mm-hmm. private viewing, they can call, they can apply, and be given a certain permission to do that. Because once oh, once that is not in the in, in force, then um, you know it's something that uh, see, can be done this, to later. This, this is for after the program, not not now. Yeah, but this film bank you're talking of, you see, this film bank you're talking of, uh, in our, you see, every jurisdiction and how uh, it works. What we're trying to do now is that now we have the Audiovisual Rights Society of Ghana, that is ASOC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're trying to operate the film bank through ASOC. You understand? Mm-hmm. That is the, uh, we have Gamro, we have Copy Ghana, and we have ASO. Gamro let, takes let care me, of... Let me, let me just... You see, this is something that's good for the public. Yeah. As for me, to be honest with you, as I said, I agree what you're doing, mm-hmm. and I think it should be done. Yeah. Because a producer must make money. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying that, just as Roland said, we have put the cart before the horse. Because before we can tell drivers not to show the movies, we must show them where to go, but to be able to I, register, I, I also it. told you that we've been discussing this for two years now. Mm. I, I, you and you feel now, now as film producers, if you undertake all these discussions and you feel that perhaps there's some liturgy in reaction to how the, the uh, you, you are in a position to get the responses, uh, especially from the state apparatus, mm-hmm. then you feel you have to take perhaps the actions yourself. Mm. Do you think you're going to yield any positive result out of this at all? Why not? With people like uh, my good brother Michael Kwe here, I think if I, we arrest anybody who is using our works without our permission and uh, we contact him, I think he will be able to defend as well. So we are home and dry. Okay. Now, now, this um, we're talking the GPRTU. Um, oh, we need to consult you before we. Yeah, the problem is that, that there's a bit of a catch twenty two. Yeah. He says the fine is what two hundred and fifty Ghana. No, I didn't say penalty said unit. Penalty two thousand two hundred and fifty. You said two thousand. Yeah, around that. Is it two thousand or two hundred? I'm not sure of, yeah. but there is. Okay. I'm not sure of it, but now, it's very huge. It used with to be that very kind small. of penalty unit, let's yeah. say it's a two hundred and fifty. Yeah. I mean, two thousand is talking about. That's small. The lawyer's fee might be more expensive than the fine. But yeah. I'm telling you. So <laughs> if you're not. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, it's just, I'm, it's just I'm, by, I stand, by the way. I stand for correction, yeah. please. I stand for correction. I'm not sure of the exact. Yeah, but he's only saying that it's not. It's not a huge sum because Thank it's you. just enshrining along. We know many of those fines that are enshrined in our laws. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, many of those penalty units need a lot of revision. And last year, I for example, we saw been, a lot no, of revision. I think it has been revised, so I need to cross-check again. And okay, you are, you are making a point, sir. Oh, no, I'm, so I'm just saying that um, at the end of the day, this is a very simple issue. We must classify it. Mm-hmm. And then there must be a certain penalty, i.e., if you don't pay that fine, you won't even be allowed to ply the road. The question now is, is it the company that we have to hold or, for example, the driver who doesn't own the bus? We know that the company is a person who is responsible or the entity responsible for anything that is done on their bus. You understand? So if that happens, then we know that, oh, we have to go to this organization we have to put in a monitoring system. We have to do this. We have to do that. All those things are not easy to do. Mm-hmm. And that is why it is even difficult for our artists when they have their music played. On radio, etc. On radio, etc. To even get their publishing rights. Because no artist can ever go and get his own publishing rights. He will have to go through a body. So usually a publisher who also himself has set up a company. This in itself is... Um, a way of somebody setting up uh, a business that will be affiliated to uh, um, the film industry. He can then call it himself Film Bank Ghana and then be used as an agency where they are like the debt collectors that the various banks like UT and the rest use private people Mm. who go and pick up things from your house if you don't pay. So there's a lot to be done. Mm. And I think that in the long run, um, we all need to understand that everybody they chop for a website. Um, film producers they they are very creative. They have to come up with a lot of ideas. They in fact have to pay the actors, pay for the venues, pay this, pay for that. the technical crew. Yes, only for them to get some revenue and then you go and put it in your trotro and let your passengers relax. So what happens is that 
next time they are going to Abidjan or going to uh, 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 Tefle, they say, oh, that one where they showed you the movie, let's go back there. You are using it to patronize your business without patronizing the one whose business patronized yours. Okay, so now we have a transport industry. It's a booming commercial transport industry, no doubt. Um, if you're having consultations or some level of negotiations or stakeholder meetings with the JPRTU, uh, then what level of enforcement in terms of the powers do they have to make sure whatever you're advocating um, comes to fruition? Well, I think uh, since it's a body, uh, it's an association in terms of GPRTU. And uh, let me also put it across that it's not only the GPRTU that we've been talking to. Oh, we are we, and yeah, we, we talk to uh, dressmakers, uh, uh, beauticians association. They have about three or four. Anytime you have a meeting with one group, another group pops up and say that, oh, we are also here. And uh, we've been having a series of meetings with all of them because they use our works in their uh, saloons and all that. Now, we believe that since we are talking to them as a body, and if uh, we, 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 we don't set the, our fixed date is uh, 1st uh, February, and after 1st February, when we enforce the laws, then I think let's see what happens after then. Mm. If you have to start talking to the GPRT people, you have already begun yeah. talking to the GPRT, and um, there's a fiat to their membership. What does it mean? You set the fees or what? No, we have to negotiate. In terms we, that uh, every we, car we, pays something a month? Something a month or a year or something. And we intend uh, giving them something like a sticker, like an insurance sticker or something. So any car you see with our sticker, ASOC sticker in front of it, that means that car has the right to uh, show uh, a movie uh, in that car. Without it, that means you've not paid. So something like that. That is, we've discussed all these things, but it gets to a point where people feel that, oh, let's okay. leave them alone and mm. let's do our own mm. thing. Uh, our movie industry, uh, Michael Kujina, is still infantile. But if you if you compare that to the U.S., where it's a it's a whole it's a whole industry, a multi-billion-dollar industry, um, you get to have that the structures are there. Um, even the actors guild, they can go on strike. We have even the script writers, they can even go on strike. The directors, they have their own guild, they can go on strike. Uh, gaffes, etc. So they have the structures. Um, this one is being done on a very uh, isolated front. Um, I, how does it work? Because uh, there will be an issue of enforcement because people to have rights, and if things are not regulated and, and legalized, it becomes an issue um, in the future. In fact, the questions that uh, you've asked, Roland, are very thought provoking because let us start from the enforcement part of it. In order for you to let people take you serious, your enforcement and your penalty, because, for example, abroad, um, I did entertainment law with um, Zumba Music, who are R. Kelly's record label in England. And one case that came up against an entity was something called willful infringement where you willfully infringed do you know the penalty five years in prison i don't know the penalty in or you pay a fine five years no fine yeah or, or you a pay fine a fine or five years a fine of hundred thousand pounds that's huge yes so you dare not you, you see that kind of thing now let us look at the ghana situation i'm going to check to find out because you see one thing about lawyers is that when you don't get that kind of case you don't deal with that kind of problem. But Mr. Socrates, I don't play the most Mr. Socrates. Mr. Socrates. Mm. Thank you very much for the update. Mr. Socrates <coughs> has a problem. Now, when you go to a Ghanaian driver showing a movie, and you tell him that, don't show the movie. You say, okay, I don't show a Ghana movie anymore. I'll put in a Nigerian movie or I'll put in a... So I'm not a, 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 a Hollywood a, star a, a, movie. A London movie. How does he regulate it? Okay, it's regulated under the Ben Convention. Oh, <laughs> as for the Ben. How does he? How, the how, ben, does, the how ben, does he? The Ben, yes. The how ben does he apply in Ghana? That's the whole point. But, but the problem here is that's why I'm saying that. But you know of the it, Ben Convention. Of course, so, the Ben Convention, which was done in Switzerland and so yeah, on, so. to start it. But you see, the problem is this: the Ben Convention, you do not know of that copyright. Whether it's been, because you see, the thing has to be registered. Mm -hmm. 
then they should be in a position to give license or permission. So the structures need to be there. If it's not there, the enforcement will happen. It's so, already there. It's automatic. No, 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 no. You can't because even the films. I know in England, for example, you can go to film bank and a certain film has not been put there. Yeah. Because that film house is not part of yes. that. Yeah. Yes. So there are even people in Ghana who have shot films who have not registered with them. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this. There are movie people themselves who don't even have license mm -hmm. on the DVDs that they are selling. Mm -hmm. They are pirates. Mm -hmm. So how does a pirate catch a pirate? Mm -hmm. You see the problem. So I'm I saying... Can you explain that? Yes, okay. Me. Now the movie is on the market. Yeah. Do, we have, do we have movie producers who are not part of you? Oh, just a few. Yes. Good. And if few. they produce movies, so you do they have the right to produce or not? You, no, and all I'm saying is that you don't Add have the, the right to under. take their money for them. Yes. Uh -huh. So if the person is showing mm -hmm. their film, mm -hmm. they can show it. Yeah. But now the question is, how do you know which one has been registered or registered? The people should be able to make a phone call. They should be able to call and say, next week, this is our list of films. This is administration. So maybe I own VIP. I'm in charge of entertainment on VIP. So I have 10 movies which will be showing on our VIP routes. So I call Mr. Socrates' organization. He won't be in charge of that because he's doing other things, multifaceted. Mm. So you call, as I say, for example, Phil Bank, which mm. he said they will set up. And please, so you want I, to show... I, I, I'm saying that right now, the Film Bank, we're operating a structure in that sense under the ASOC, ASOC office. Audiovisual right so there are people can call yes the, and they will tell them the list yeah. of the movies. But How, if they call and that movie is not listed, they can show it. If they call and it's not listed, it is bet then between you and the particular producer. Thank you. you but understand? he's saying that beyond that very arrangement, mm -hmm. we need to have a centralized administrative entity for which the producer who is not part of you mm -hmm. also could be accountable and that to, is where and I then whoever is, has to gain from good. his work and that is, could also be accountable that is why to that I'm everybody. saying that we're operating that on the ASOC office. Yes, but you see, that's what I'm saying that. But yet some of the film producers, yeah. in my opinion, before anybody can produce a film mm -hmm. and make copies for distribution, because mm -hmm. distribution itself has a license, yeah. before you can have a distribution license, you must register it. Yeah. But people are distributing without registering it. Yeah, that is so I'm saying that mm -hmm. those people themselves, they must be sanctioned by you him. in your own in, in your own uh, 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 outfit. No, you he, must he has produced his own film. No, 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 no. But oh. he can't just distribute it without licensing it with you. No, that is his personal. It doesn't. It doesn't okay. work so, like so, that. So, 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 listen. If if an independent producer who is yeah. not part of yeah. the regular, yeah. so to speak, because you are the regular, you yeah. are the mass. Yeah. Uh, how, how does he license no, his let film? Me, let me let me make this additional point. I produced the movie. Before it is distributed, it must be licensed because mm. the content must mm. be approved. Mm. No. And if the content is approved, then it will be. I think given we are talking the about permission. a certified. Uh, is it classification board? The classification no, board. No, 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 no. You are, you are mixing one thing. Let me add this Let me, and make it clear. We are talking about the laws process. in Ghana. No, no. So the laws in Ghana. It's not about laws in Ghana. It's about international law that should apply here, because some of us who have practiced abroad, mm. we have got the experience, mm. and we have seen the way the thing is done. And the thing is not just done at the end. But they have the structures. As you said, putting the cart before the horse. Now, this is how it starts. Classification board, they look at the content. Once the content is approved, you are allowed to distribute it. Yeah. That's the second avenue. Yeah. And with that distribution itself, you must have a license. Nobody should be able to distribute anything without it because they are having that license for things like tax and so on and so forth. So once you have that license in itself, what they can do is they'll set a criteria that before you get a distribution license, you must register it with ASOC. Otherwise, you won't be allowed to distribute it. Uh. So at the distribution point, mm. they will have that film mm. listed with ASOC, and it will make their job mm. easier. That's mm. the suggestion I wanted to... Good, mm. Very good. Yeah. Well, mm. well, well, well taken. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, let me ask you, what, what are the structures you have now? Just tell us, um, perhaps. Uh, start from the beginning stage. You're a producer. Either you belong to your association, you don't belong to your association. If you produce a movie, how do you get it onto the market? Well, if you produce a film, you first of all have to get the classification, which is by law, the film to be classified. Then, when it comes to distribution, it's as your own program. Whether you want to give it to the distributors... Uh, to distribute it for you or you want to do your own distribution. When it comes to licensing, um, the laws of Ghana, 
uh, gives you the right to either go and register it with the copyright sector where the um, licensing like is, or you can choose to open yourself up. That one, when you have a case, it is up to you and it's just like maybe your house and we say that, oh, the Ghana police wants to protect your house for you and mm. say, no, I want to do my own protection. That is at your... I remember during the 20... Uh, uh, <coughs> 20... The, the formation of this new law. Mm, mm. 2005. 2005. Um, during some of the workshops and seminars for it, this thing came up. And people were of the view that, no, you can't force me to register my work with the right. copyright office compulsory. And, and I can choose to protect Mr. Sokin, myself. That's why I said you never force them to register. Yeah. But you see, before I choose Roland or you to distribute, mm -hmm. the person classifies. And classification is just to say that this is adult this is yeah. PG or this yeah. is yeah. a parental guidance or this one. But children license can watch to it. distribute is But the license to do because now it's for public consumption. Yes. Yeah. You can regulate that. Yeah. And once that is regulated, mm -hmm. then at that point, because it's being distributed, it's being distributed on various levels. Some will go to cinema houses yeah. where in that case they will have the other licenses attached. Yeah. Then we also have those that would have the bars, the pubs, even football mm -hmm. that they show is licensed. Yeah. Then at that stage, you will determine. So if you say, this is DVD, it's for public viewing or private viewing, home entertainment only, if you look at the variety there, then you will say, but where it is not for home entertainment, the license can be sought from this organization. Mm -hmm. So the distributor is not his business, mm -hmm. but the thing has registered. Yeah. So that whoever wants to get it out of there, they have a place to go to. So all the movies are there, and then the various producers and executive producers mm. will get some finance for it. Mm -hmm. Nobody will ever... Mm. not want to get Wait, money, uh, even though they still may not have the copyright registered, the distribution can be regulated. You see, what you've said mm. is the mm. ideal situation, yeah. which we even, we, we also have in Ghana. Okay. You understand? It is here in Ghana. Mm. But also, there is a small window. Which is? For you to decide whether you want it to be licensed or not. Oh, I have produced my film, I want to put it out there. No. You see, I have produced my film, you monitor it for classification, don't you? Yes. The person can't just put it out there without coming for monitoring. Are you talking, then, about, are you talking about the, reg the sending for classification? That is one is compulsory. That it's one is compulsory. But Good. when it comes to licensing it with ASOC, No, that's not the part that I'm talking about. I'm saying that once the content, Roland, mm -hmm. this is where I'm coming from, the content, you can't just do a movie and show it. Mm -hmm. So it has to be monitored. Yes. That then is where the, the classification board code comes in. Then the second monitoring should be its distribution. Mm -hmm. Because really, we're going to allow you to go and sell whether independent or not. I'm coming. Whether you can go and sell porn movie in the kindergarten store. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will tell so, you that. So that's where that's where licensing so for distribution li comes in. Uh -huh. So whether you want to distribute yourself or not, or not you need you have to, to have to a license. license it and then do the we distribution have that? Center. We have that. We have that. We so have if that. the if the gentleman who has produced and I'm an independent film producer, yeah. I'm not registered with you, mm -hmm. uh, your recognized body. Mm -hmm. I decide to do my own distribution. Yes. Uh, do I have to come and register? Do I have to register? No. That, that is where yeah. I'm saying that you go to ASOC if no. you want to. You are saying that if, yeah. if you and I'm want saying to. that, and yeah. I'm saying that. It's so supposing I produce this and yeah. the content has been approved. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now for distribution, it's yeah. supposed to be ideally it's supposed to be distributed. Let's say in in only pubs. Yes. But mm -hmm. because I am not part of, mm -hmm. I have not gone to ASOC for registration, yes. I can go and distribute it in lorry stations. And when the, law, distribute when the, schools, when the No, but there's schools. no law which has stopped you from where to distribute yes, it. Yes. No, there is. There is. Under the Classification Act, eh, under the Classification Act, all these laws are there. Okay. They are there, black so, and white. So you are saying that then it comes to the point of enforcement. Enforcement, not from... Uh, Who's supposed thing? to do the enforcement? The ministry, under which the classification... Of justice. The, no, the ministry under which the classification board falls under. For the force under Ministry of Information? Yes. They are supposed to do the... the and the, the ministry the will do nothing. That's why I'm saying that. So and that's why don't blame us. No, no, no. It's not about blame. But it's your about industry. revenue. Yes, it's you, your industry. The you are losing the money. What money are we losing? No. It is the individual producer who is losing. Because yeah, but you are part of the producers. You produce movies. Yes, so but you, I don't want to do money. All my films are registered. All my films are classified. And when I... Anybody shows my film. But you I are making an advocacy for the industry. Yes. yes. So you have to make sure that... And you are still not going to try and force everybody yeah, uh, to yeah. come there. Because you want your monitoring to be one 
okay. plug. Yes, I, we want it to be one plug, mm -hmm. but don't also forget that mm -hmm. in Ghana we have freedom of association. Mm -hmm. One can choose, look at the laws, Definitely. and choose to do whatever. Because if after licensing, and he hasn't given it to us to do the um, regulation for him, mm. we cannot force to do the regulation for him compulsory. Mm. Once the uh, classification uh, laws license you that you have the right to distribute mm. and you have ABC places to distribute mm. and you don't do that, mm. it is not up to me to come and uh, arrest mm. you. Mm. I can only report you. Okay. So we understand on this very instance where they are showing the films in the buses, what mm. do you do about it then? Yeah, that is where let's wait till uh, f uh, f first February and see because I have not licensed them to show. Have you given them aut ultimatum or what? Is that first February is for? For 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 them to come and let's sit down and see what which we, people the GPRT yes all those who are using our the question you asked is so imperative my because job, I'm wondering yes, I, I, asked, I, I asked because mm -hmm. I own a, a chain or a fleet of cars yes let's say in my company yeah and then I'm and giving you first are on, you are on the GPRT yes well I'm on the GPRT yes and and, and, and GPRT you comes to tell me that they, they, they have not gotten my consensus. They've mm -hmm. gotten some consensus of other, but they don't have the quorum Roland, that they need. Roland, Roland, Roland. So this I, is the issue. GPLTU itself, the, the, all the bus drivers and the car not under all, them. No, we are some on the Pro Tour. Pro Tour. Pro -tour. Pro -tour. Yeah. So, so we, we are various transport, yes. and they are dealing with all of them. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, That's what I'm saying. When you go and make your condition upon somebody's condition, i.e., if they will agree. If they will tell their drivers. I've told you that we've been working for, we've been talking two for two years. Good. So that's why I said don't go to them anymore. What you do is that you put a system in place and you don't want loopholes. Now they don't have the system and that's, they want this and, to be enforced. And so quickly. When you say we don't have a system. No, we, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm saying that we want to enforce it. Yeah. Now enforcement of the law means no loopholes. Mm -hmm. It's not about whether somebody uh, 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 movie is registered or not because First of all, the movie is being shown in a bus. It's very difficult even for the driver to know that, oh, this movie that we are showing is on that list or they've not done it. As mm -hmm. he said, some people mm -hmm. saw for that. Definitely. So you, in order to cover your back, because we are in Ghana, mm -hmm. we are in Africa, our systems are not computerized. We must find a way that right from monitoring, which is compulsory, mm -hmm. you get them from the compulsory angle, distribution, which everybody has to do, they license it then. And once they license it, it is listed. So once any film has been licensed in Ghana as having been monitored and having been given permission for distribution, you cannot show that film. Mm -hmm. That way, then nobody can try and play smart mm -hmm. on you mm -hmm. to do, do you whatever. Get his point. That's uh -huh. I'm his point. Then that the second but, one is... But, 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 the problem we are having is that the terms and uh, let me say the terminology he is using it's, it's just different it's than, just different but you feel but that we, you feel we, have, the the same, we okay. have the same structures here okay because he's talking of okay. so he just told us now and that's how the system works at the moment once the film is approved yeah, that is you the can, Yes, up, up, once it's approved, you go to the market, you do your distribution. You go to away, like, that is once the you film is licensed. We are calling licenses, we are calling the classification because all the licensing regulations mm -hmm. we are talking of, we have put it under the classification okay. Okay. law. You've so made your point. Okay, now, uh, so 1st of February, what, what do you do? You take, when people don't, don't observe, yeah. they, are not, you are, they are not observing, you take police and so yes, we, 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 we will go by the law. No, I understand you. So yeah. what are you going to do? I won't tell you. Because I oh, know. Wow. No, no, no. Listen. No, the point <laughs> is that you see, I'm asking this question, Michael Quay Jr., <laughs> because um, over the last decade, what we've seen by way of enforcement on copyright issues yeah. um, is you go and you go lock up people's stores, ransack the mm -hmm. ones that are on the wayside for copyright, uh, mm -hmm. for infringing on, on your mm -hmm. works, etc. Mm -hmm. And by way, you call that enforcement. But that doesn't compel those mm. people to pay whatever penalties or fees they are supposed to pay before selling but or for showing these two those years words. that we, we, we've been talking what are we discussing what have we been discussing with them we've put all these things in black and white <coughs> in there okay. all that is left is for them to recognize that no we this thing must be rectified okay so from first mm. what will we do whatever we would do to protect our investments mm. then if they choose to come fine okay so first what are you going to do then what, i said I won't this is the part where i disagree <laughs> with my brother you he see, said he's not going to tell no no you see he's but i'm not sure that my investment is protected yes you no. won't infringe on my rights no you see 
uh, do, 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 no, do we have to make this a, a legal, a legalistic issue or, 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 or a means must of... Be legalistic because you no, see... No, no, but instead of persuade, you persuade people to, to for obey years, the law. For two I, years, I have been persuading you for two yeah, years, what are we talking of? That people will not respect... I think you are not listening to me. No, I, I am. said for I two am. years... I am. We've I'm asking talking. questions. I am listening yes, to you perfectly. But for two years, I'm asking been, questions. I started by saying two years. What have we been discussing for two years? I understand. All the legal, legalities and whatever, the persuasion, the convincing, the uh, whatever. We've been doing it for two so years. So the ultimatum is 1st of February. Um, if they don't come, what happens? That's why he said he won't say. But you see, Roland. But whatever I'll let do to protect this. myself, yeah. I'll do. No, let, us, let us get this. First <laughs> of all, we cannot do whatever we like. Yeah. But under I the law, I said protection I, under the law. Yeah, I find it very upsetting. When Ghanaians don't respect creative work, mm. we must get to that culture. Mm. We can only get there by taking certain measures mm. within the law. Mm. But there's no measure within the law that's a secret. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you, Roland, you come and take my chicken, mm. eh? I accuse you. Say, oh, Roland, what did my cook Okay? You have chewed my chicken, and I'm upset with you. There must be a sentence or a fine which is written down already. So, so that's where, okay. that's where that's my that's brother that's comes in. That's that's so that's so I agree with you. Let me just add this. Okay. I agree with you. No, but so how do we arrest, you how do you arrest uh, Roland. Roland before you give him all the sentence? That is why I'm saying that now there must be monitoring. There must be a system put in place which will catch these people. It's part of it. The police, for example, that's their job. Their job is to enforce the law. So you can that's what I'm saying. You have to sit down with the police and say he, that. He said they have. No, no, no. They, they have. have. They and have. So therefore, wait, From wait, all wait. that he said, they have. Wait, 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 wait. When you sit with the police, it's not just about sitting with them. There must be a certain result. So what do you have? A tax force? We, we've put everything in place. Because they they have everything. Come, yeah, but you say you're too this. worried. No, I think they just no, have to no. come and hire you. I'm surprised, Roland. You didn't ask me a follow-up question. That you don't have the right to tell us in Ghana that I'll do it, but I won't tell you. I'll do whatever it takes. You well, can't, you can't force you me to say whatever oh, is no, no, no. in my uh, hands. You can't. Roland, that's unacceptable. As for law, you must tell the law but how, what will happen to him if he breaks the law. How do you protect your house? Do I know? The, are you telling me the kind of security gadgets you have in your house? Will you tell me? Oh, I know. That's, that's different. It's not different. To discover. You can say, I won't tell you how I'll discover the person has done it. Because but I'll even, find... Even if I'm entering your house... Whatever security measures you have, why don't you write it and put it on your oh, uh, door? Is there? You see the wire. Electric you wire. See the they you, yes. They even tell you the voltage in there. Yeah. The voltage fine. Yeah. If you touch it, it will kill it you. They tell you. you. Even but dogs. When you put dogs, they tell the people they, they, they are dogs in there. Don't come. Fine. But how the dogs will attack attack you? Or how you train <laughs> the dogs to attack? You, 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 maybe a dog will just bite my okay, I get your point. I get your yeah. point. I get your point. Okay. So you tell us what the end result will be. But if the flout, oh, that one, it will be legal. And I think uh, we will knock on your doors, please. Yes, so would, prepare. I, yeah, we would, need more lawyers. Yeah, I would want to advise. <laughs> I said we need more lawyers. Well, it'll take you a lot of legal fees. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I would, would want no, to we will not pay. We will take, you have to yeah. get oh, the you money pay, before you, you get your share. You pay. I, I would want to advise <laughs> you pay. that, um, honestly, some of these things is education. Mm. A lot of people don't know this. And you see that by them announcing it drastically, they've made us all sit up. And begin to consider how it's done. I never even knew that this is something that is being enforced in Ghana. So I think that now that they've brought it out fiercely and, uh, and given us a date, Ghanaians will start responding. I will tell you that if they can just let Ghanaians know as they are making that announcement, for example, as this program was going on, it would be nice to scroll under and say, if you want to license a vehicle to uh, a movie to watch in a vehicle or a public place, mm. please call this number. Well, he's not paying blah, for blah, it. Blah, blah. He, no, he has I, to pay well, for I'm the just crawler. giving you that, for example. They have to find a way to let Ghanaians know that if we can't watch it, what do we do to allow us to watch it? That should be the second part rather than just the enforcement part. Mm. We need the information part, Mr. Sukrit, for us to know that this is a phone number or this is a website we should get in touch with then even our clients sometimes they come to lawyers and so oh we want to do this we want to do that we also need this number how can we call them then we can get them in touch with the relevant organization and then there'll be rather proactive harmony 
instead of us waiting for the dysfunction to happen mm. and punish people, mm. we are rather going for prevention instead of rather diagnosis and therapy to cure the malady that exists in this area. Okay, uh, let me assure you and let me also say that personally, eh, I think we need no more workshops in this industry, no education, whatever. We don't need it again. You've had done all that you We've could. done all that. You see, I've been involved with this copyright thing for, for over, over 20 years. No, 14 years that I've been on the copyright uh, sector. We've done so many workshops, so many sensitization, adverts on TV, whatever. We've done, and it's so expensive when you're doing it. What is it's the number to license a movie to watch okay. in a thing? <laughs> Have you told us that? Can you please okay. allow me? No, it's, no, it's, it's no, a direct no, question. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. What is the so number So I'm telling you that, look, you see these Gaga boys who sell these pirated works. Eh? If Your you want pirated works? Yes, our pirate. If you want to buy, they speak tree with you. The moment you arrest them, they tell you that they don't understand tree. They don't understand English. They, they, you see, they, they, they know the game. Everybody so knows what is right. So why don't you find right. out the source? Why they do the... I'm coming. Me, I, I always say that we don't need to go to the source to arrest those. We know where their warehouses are. We don't need to go there. It's too expensive and risky to go there. So that is for another day. But I'm telling you that, uh, Mr. Michael Kwe, Yeah. We've done a lot of uh, education mm, out there. I believe that, yeah. We've done a lot of sensitization, whatever information. Sensitize who? The, the users, the, the, pirates. the pirates, whoever. The, Even the, the pirates, the pirates, you are sensitizing them, so. Yes, to stop. Okay. I, <laughs> and I think I if there's any but you need to educate you need to the entire public too, because they patronize the works. That's the point. Who? The, the, the public. Yes. The public. The they know. How no, many, how many businesses we, know what number to call to show a movie okay. in their pub? I have, I have some messages here. The, the, Thank you. I have some messages know. here. I think that it will pick some of your thoughts. And uh, it said, um, it said, concert people, they should, they said they are concert people, they should rather sue Adum TV and not Trotro Cars. Well, oh. Adum TV, they pay copyright, I think. Yeah. Right. So, direct licensing. Yes. That's what we do. That's what you do, direct licensing. So, sir, um, that's, it hey, do some work. Please, Omutia direct licensing. And then we have um, this one from um, Nash, the lecture. He says, we know that they do it to promote the movie industry. Why should they, why should, why should they be paying? <laughs> but that's, that's a very wrong way of looking at it, though, because it doesn't work. He says, you do cantata movies, and they are being shown in Trotro, and you are complaining. That's from Nana Kwesi Apia. And uh, we have this one from Ashley. They are rather, they are rather promoting the movies, and uh, you are complaining. So we have this one. It says they are rather promoting, they are, they are, they are rather promoting the movies, and you are complaining because I wasn't the fan of Ghanaian movies, but I was forced to watch a little Wayne movies in the bus. So from that moment, I became a stand fan of local movies. So please. I guess you have to support uh, Ashis Ali. Um, we have this one. What, what, which kind of right? Didn't he buy the dicks? You're talking about the driver of the car. And you're saying that um, he, he, he bought it to entertain his passengers, not, to, not for them to sleep. And also advertising for the passenger, for the producer as well. So you see... Among the public, there's a misconception. That yeah. is why the education comes in. Yeah. You are coming straight away with enforcement. I don't have any difficulty with that wow. as well. Anyway, so so February um, first, you are going to do the enforcement. Yeah, we are going to protect our rights. <laughs> you make it sound as a revolutionary period. <laughs> All right. um, Roland, the problem is we have to wrap up. So yes, just people uh, don't understand where Mr. Sukrit is coming from. They are ignorant. Well, it's because they haven't been educated. Thank you. They've chosen and not no, to no, listen. No, 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 no. Secretary, you should not be defensive. You see, you are dealing with the public here. Public, I'm not you, dealing with the public. I'm dealing with... No, no, no. You need a public along no, the... You see, this is an issue that it doesn't... The, if you look at all the messages that have come, they show that they don't understand what you're talking about. They don't need to I understand. I am telling you that... No, no they need to... No, no, the no, public no, no, needs no, to understand. the person who is infringing on my rights, this is the person I'm dealing with. But you need the public as well. It's a... It's a... Wait. Where he's come, where he's saying is true. Basically, ignorance of the law is no excuse. That's where he's coming from. Yes, he's right. But 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 even in America, no, they make you know. Wait, I'm, I'm, in America, or England, and Ghana's law is from England. Okay, 
you must let the person be aware of the crime he's about to commit. And for two years, we told them. We believe in prevention is better than cure. For so two years, we've told them. I understand. Right. And I agree with you. So let us okay. wrap up with this. I want to just give small advice to my brother. That as they go along with the enforcement, they must go al along with letting people know that those who want to obey the law, this is the number to call. They Let know. them know they that. Know. They know. Because I know that um, uh, a lot of people are not aware of what's going no, on. No, they know. I can assure you. Change. These people we've been talking to, they know. They know even the name of the officers who have been meeting them. They know them. Okay. So they, they, they okay, I want know. to ask, uh, we're ending though. We've ended actually. But this one, let me ask you. The, the songs that you, sh you, 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 you show or even play in the movies, do yeah. you pick up right for Yes, them? we pay those who, who produce uh, uh, the songs. Uh, they, yeah, we pay them. Oh, no, there have been times where people have used, and that was the problem I had with that movie producer I mentioned his name earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why. That is a private thing. Eh? What about no, the it's also a movie. What about the international, that's, that's what about the international well, express, one? I won't mention his name. Uh -huh. no. I'm saying that I, I mean, don't in the industry, no, 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 no. people to have private no, 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 people no, no, songs. No, 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 that's not what we are talking of. What about the international songs? When you no, that's the wrong question. That's the wrong question. It's, it's the wrong question. <laughs> the wrong and, uh, uh, Let's talk well, about that, people well, who, using our films in well, the class. Well, that, that, that'll be it Very for AM inspiring. Talk. <laughs> I have had in the studio uh, Socrates Safo, a movie producer, and they are advocating that well, the movies that are shown in buses and other recreational centers need really uh, to be paid for by those owners of those centers or those uh, transport organizations, etc. Um, our entertainment lawyer for the morning has been Michael Quaid Jr. He's actually a lawyer for all services. It doesn't matter, oil, whatever, corporates, he's there. So Michael Quaid Jr. Uh, is also in the studio. He's a politician as well, a member of the MPP. But we're not doing politics this morning, so that'll be it for now. The AM Talk, please. Next, we're looking at life science culture. We're looking at that very sensitive issue of uh, Rastafarianism, and uh, if you're a, if you're a Rasta person, um, what do people think about you? If you see a Rastafarian, what do you think about them? Like me? Oh, you're a Rastafarian? Yeah. Okay. That's what we're looking at. Lifestyle and culture is up next. <laughs>